not an APA pattern going on underneath, right? What you're listening to as far as the APOS will help you place those quarter notes accurately. Okay? So try to work on that a little bit, and I think that's, that'll make you sound even better. themselves are little cups of brass with, of course, the clapper inside that makes the noise, and plastic handles. They go anywhere from little tiny egg cup size things to great big, like a giant flower pot. Playing in the bell choir is, if you're playing in a full-size bell choir or ensemble like that, regardless, you're still learning a lot of teamwork. A successful ringer is someone who can cooperate easily with other people, especially since if you can't cooperate, there will be a gaping hole in the music where your part is missing. You're learning how to rely on other people. Um, you're learning to do things which will allow other people to rely on you and work with you. The hardest part for some people is just learning how to read the music and feel the rhythms. Um, for other people like, say, a pianist or a clarinetist or something, those people sometimes have a real issue with not playing the whole melodic line. You only have one note that you play in all the, or like more than one, but like three. So that was sort of difficult at first, learning how to read the music. That's actually one of the real peculiarities about handbells because in this society it's about the only time you're playing part of an instrument. And so a dozen or so people will make up the entire um, performer and then each of them gets those couple of three notes. You have to sort of listen to each other a little bit more since you don't even have any melodies by yourself and there aren't really very many solos because you can't play a melody very well by yourself. We can't work at these complicated songs without getting to know each other better. Personalities emerge. We get to watch it happen. And we can see who's a fast learner, who's a slow learner, who has determination whether they're not very good or whether they are. And you get to like people. Our persona is that we want to project that we have fun. Strangely enough, people have told us it's really weird, but you look like you're having fun. We, we accept that and we enjoy it. When we first get a new piece, everything is chaotic. First the director assigns what your range of bells is going to be. Then he picks the hardest place and we play that for a while and it's terrible. After we've played those few measures for a while, he picks another hard bunch of measures, and we learn that for a while. And after about three weeks on the hard parts, they begin to sound all right. The spring ring, you, you wear yourself out getting ready for this. Every year the spring ring happens in Cupertino, where all the bell clubs in Silicon Valley get together in a big auditorium in one of the Cupertino churches and everyone goes to the auditorium and rehearses together for the first time the four or so songs that they've been learning. This is once a year and you you don't want to dishonor your club. So so that's what gives you the butterflies. We actually do use the word crash and burn just like anyone else. And a crash and burn sometimes happens very gradually. You get one person who doesn't know where they are for a second. And generally, the person who's to play right after them is waiting for that sound. And when they don't hear it, they get confused. So maybe after not hearing it, they come in a half a beat too late. And then, of course, the people after them come in too late also. And we have to stop and do it again. All probably 40%. 
near 40 somewhere. If you don't rehearse efficiently, people never have a chance to become confident with what they're playing. Everybody's performance affects the whole thing. We're only as strong as our weakest ringer. So we all try not to be the weakest. <laughs>